Hello, and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. It's your host, Gary and Ian. Hello. And today, we're going to talk about the Child's Play Trilogy. That's Child's Play 1, 2, and 3, not the Chucky movies that come later. Now, Child's Play 1 came out in 1988. Yeah. And this is at the craze of horror movie icons being birthed. We've had Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers. Leatherface. Leatherface, Pinhead. And audiences were waiting for the next icon of horror. Lo and behold, it came surprisingly in the form of a minute of a doll, Chucky. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? <laughs> uh, this is from director Tom Holland, who previously made uh, Fright Night, uh, which also starred. Uh, Chris Sarandon. Chris Sarandon. Yep. So already we've got a very talented horror filmmaker uh, birthing this film from scriptwriter Don Mancini, who would later go on to direct some of the latter Chucky movies. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Child's Play? Well, the story uh, starts with uh, Brad Dorff playing Charles Lee Ray, the notorious Lakeshore Strangler. And he's chased into a department store by Chris Sarandon playing a detective. He is shot and wounded, and in, with his last dying breath, Charles Lee Ray sends his soul into the body of a good guy doll. This good guy doll is then bought by Catherine Hicks, who is playing the mother of Andy Barclay, and she gives the doll to him for his birthday. Chucky then comes alive and tries to play hide the soul with Andy, and along the way murders quite a few people. <laughs> This film is brilliant. I, I, I love the Charles Play movies. I, I remember watching the first one when I was not so young. I think about 11 or 12. And it, it wasn't the whole horror icon that got me at first. It was the suspense that built up. The, the story they try and tell you is that, you know, even though we know Chucky is possessing this doll, they try and convince us that Andy is the killer. Well, it's interesting you say that. It's because in the initial script, the very first draft, uh, Andy was the killer. Yeah. And he was using the doll and blaming all of these random deaths on the doll. And it was only when Tom Holland, the director, actually redrafted the script and uh, because it had been floating around for quite a while, they just didn't know how to move forward with it. And obviously the idea of Charles Lee Ray was then added to the script and then it, that's what brought the doll to life. But the film really builds the suspense yeah. about whether whether it's true or not because you don't get to see the doll doing a lot of things that would suggest it's alive that early on in the movie. Yeah. That was due to the restraints of the technology at the time where this was kind of like the birthplace of uh, animatronics. Yeah. Uh, the only larger scale kind of puppet in filmmaking at this time was perhaps Jaws and... Uh, <laughs> And all of the you know the terrible issues they had on set with the puppets not working, which is why in Child's Play, uh, there's quite a few instances where they used a little person. Yeah. Or for instance, there is actually a scene where uh, the actor who plays Andy, his little sister, has got the the Chucky outfit on and <laughs> running around when they're in the apartment. So, but with a lot of careful camera tricks and uh, and editing and quick cuts, you the enigma uh, and the suspense, sorry, of of Chucky coming alive is slowly built up. Yeah, this it is it's brilliantly uh, orchestrated with Brad Dorff's voice. He is just scary as Chucky. You you just hear hear him talking and you see him in the background, just this little red headed figure just running. And uh, as much as I want to tell myself as Brad Dorff, I can't help but just imagine it. Chucky is alive and he's running around killing people. Hi. Me, Chucky. What do you think? From, from the very first kill, I mean, like, like we already said, 
the, the camera work they use to build up the tension where he kills Aunt Maggie in the in the apartment and he just walks around making these little noises so that she'll be she'll move to another part of the apartment and then he'll move and he'll pick up a weapon and then scare her smack her in the face with a hammer and send her out the window <laughs> brilliantly done yeah i mean but that wasn't until like a good 30 minutes into the movie mm. i mean that was the whole build up of act 1 uh, to the movie where he does kill uh, the babysitter uh, which is also uh, her best friend yeah uh, it's the scene where He's explaining to her that, you know, Chucky is alive and Chucky wants to watch the news. Yeah. And it's when she picks up the doll and just smacks him across the doorway as she takes him back to the bedroom and throws him down onto the bed. And it's the way the camera just closes up on, on Chucky's eyes. Yeah. And you're just like, that doll's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, the, the character of Andy as well, I absolutely love in this film. I mean, the the older actors, Chris Randon and, and Catherine Hicks, are are brilliantly portraying their characters. You know, you really feel the emotion from the mother when she fears that something's happening to Andy. And you also feel the tension from the detective because obviously we'd seen him at the beginning. He's chased Charles Lee Ray down and he believes he's dead. Now finding out that he's still alive, he wants to close the case. But then you have Andy who throughout the film just develops so brilliantly. The, the first time you ever see him is when he's making breakfast for his mum. And uh, and and he he makes me think of my son as well, where he's just got this big plate of food, and he's like, "Mommy, mommy, wake up, wake up!" And then once he gets Chucky, and Chucky starts taking him around to do all the killings, you, you feel like the innocence from the child is being, you know, misled by Chucky. But then later on in the police station, he just he gets all angry, and he's just, "Come on, Chucky, talk, talk," you know, and you just want Chucky to say something, but then. He's just sitting there biding his time. <laughs> I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho! Ha ha ha! Mommy, he's doing it on purpose. He told me never to tell about him or he'd kill me. Well, that's one of the things that I really like about the first Child's Play movie is that it plays on that innocence of childhood, that primordial fear of, of having something that you love that is your toy uh, coming to life and... And, and and trying to kill you or possess you and you know going to your your mother or your father or, or an adult and trying to explain this is happening yeah. it's like you know it, it, you would pass it off straight away you know you you can you know you can fantasize like toy story about your toys coming to life or you can be petrified like poltergeist of the killer clown that sat at the end of your bed so so child's play really hit that um that fear of 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 being a parent and having a child and worrying whether your child is going insane or whether you have got a killer doll toy. <laughs> <laughs> and, th and then later on, I mean, it's when he's in the uh, the, the social worker's building that he's just, when he's crying because Chucky's actually climbing up the stairs coming to kill him, he is just so scared and you can feel that from him. But then that scene kind of gets me because there is no glass on those windows. <laughs> yeah. Chucky is climbing up the side of this building to get Andy, and there are bars on these windows, but there's no glass. So he's able to just climb through the bars, steal some keys, climb back out onto the edge, and carry on after Andy. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? I've got to give Chucky props. He is the stealthiest killer oh, yeah. in a long time. <laughs> it's the pitter patter of those little feet as he goes <laughs> squeaking across the floor. It looks like he's hovering half the time. <laughs> But uh, well, credit to uh, to the puppeteers, because I think there was like nine of them that oh. worked on him for all of the various parts. Um, and one of the most fascinating things that I like when I re-watch Child's Play is watching the progression of the doll from being that shiny plastic um, image yeah. through throughout the film. He has many layers where his eyes start to sink back into his skull. Um, his flesh starts to change colour so that he starts to look more alive. Yeah. And it's especially the eyes, they become more translucent and it just really gives you that presence of there being somebody behind uh, the mask of the doll. <laughs> Give me the power, I beg of you! The theory behind it is he, Charles Lee Ray was taught voodoo by, by a, a voodoo witch doctor and that's what's allowed him to transfer his soul into the doll and I just love that backstory you know because it's the, it, it's like whether he goes to see the witch doctor 
And the witch doctor explains to him that the longer he spends in that body, the more human he becomes. So as the film progresses, we see more injuries on, on Chucky. We see blood coming out of it. And that is just absolutely brilliant. You know, they've designed this doll so it will bleed. <laughs> well, this is also at the craze. At the time, there was the craze of having uh, these toys that have been... Uh, in the marketplace, in the children's marketplace, they were beginning to release dolls that would wee, or dolls that would actually first start talking. Yeah. So it was the fact that people were queuing up round the blocks to get their kids these presents. So child's play is actually uh, an extension of that reality. <laughs> Crazy bastards. <laughs> But yeah, also credit to the actors for actually being able to react to a doll that obviously would not have been that intimidating on set. Yeah. It's just those fight sequences where he's like, he's on the back of their neck and they're running around the room. And you just see this doll swinging back and forth. But overlaid with Brad Dorr's voice, his, his voice is so foul-mouthed. I, I look at Grima Wormtongue and then I look at Chucky and I'm like, they are two different people. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Brad Dorf, the very first um, film I ever saw him in was One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. And he has proven that he is a fantastic actor, but it really is his voice work that really sells child's play yeah. and the character of Chucky. He, he brings Chucky to life, and that's what just makes this film an utter classic. Absolutely. This is a fantastic horror movie. But what's your favourite scene from child's play, Ian? Oh, see, there are just... There, there are... There are Quite a few, I mean, just any of the scenes where Chucky's stealthily moving around with Andy, are, it's quite scary. But my, my favourite scene has to be where he goes to see the voodoo priest, mainly because it, it sets the backbone for later Child's Play movies where the voodoo priest explains to him that the longer he stays in there, the more human he's going to become and he needs to transfer his soul into the first person he spoke to, which obviously would have been Andy. But then it's... The way that Chucky brings out the voodoo doll, and he's just, and you just, you remember that it actually has a bit of magic in this film as well, and he just breaks the bones and he stabs in. The guy's like, <laughs> at the same time, it's the first time you get a full frontal shot of Chucky. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think my favourite scene from the film is the big reveal. It's the moment where he goes from the doll to Chucky. Uh, it's the scene where the mother is threatening to throw the doll into the fire if he doesn't speak and it's the it's the vulgarity of Chucky it's the way he screams and curses it's just it's the moment where you're watching the film that you're like <laughs> I said talk to me damn it or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire you stupid bitch you filthy slut did you fuck no! with me no! 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 part that makes me laugh every time I watch it and that is when Chucky is on the elevator with the old couple <laughs> yeah. and she turns around and goes ugly doll <laughs> and the elevator is going up and you just hear Chucky say fuck you <laughs> See, that's, I, I love that scene too because it, it, it shows you as well that Chucky does not give a shit and it, it plays on the comedy aspect which will become more fluid in the later films absolutely it's because of uh, Child's Play 1 that the character of Chucky started to come through more and more and more throughout the editing process and the making of the movie, which was obvious for the studio then when they realised that they had this character potential to make more sequels. However, it was the director's intention to make sure that that didn't happen. And in his own commentary, he directly stated that he wanted this to end. And so, therefore, the mythology of actually how to kill <laughs> Chucky, which was what made, you know, for the third act of the movie. Still. <laughs> would you recommend Child's Play? Definitely. I would fully recommend uh, Child's Play 1. If you've never seen it, it's a fun, scary horror movie. If you have, go back and watch Chucky kill some people again. I highly recommend Child's Play. There's not that many uh, killer doll movies. <laughs> uh, I think there was Magic, which uh, was the ventriloquist uh, yeah. dummy. And there was a Twilight episode um, that dealt with uh, Talking Tina, I think it was. So, um, but if, if you want to watch a killer doll movie or if you just want to watch a classic horror movie, uh, you won't go wrong with Child's Play. Andy, no, please. We're friends to the end, remember? This is the end, friend. Which brings us on to Child's Play 2, which came out in 1990. 
so only two years after the original movie. And of course, the success of the original movie, both theatrically, uh, on VHS, just it just made the studio need to make another movie to cash in on, on Child's Play, and of course on Chucky. Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. <laughs> yeah, why don't you give us the synopsis for Child's Play 2? Uh, well, the story follows um, Andy like six months, a year after the, the story of the first one. And he's been moved around from foster home to foster home. And the company that are making the good guys dolls have managed to get hold of the remains of Chucky from the first film. They decide to rebuild him. <laughs> and what turns out to be the most craziest opening sequence, they bring Chucky's soul back to life and he kills a worker at the factory. <laughs> Now, the, the company uh, head decides that they want to get the good guys back into the good limelight. And so they take the first doll, which actually has Chucky Soul in, and he finds out where Andy is living and decides to hunt him down again and play hide the soul again. <laughs> it was great that they managed to get the same actor back to, to play Andy. Uh, it was disappointing in terms of the writing that they would cart off the mother to a mental asylum and the fact that they wouldn't even mention the police officers that also witnessed the events that happened in Child's Play. So from a story point of view, it is, it is a little bit hard to swallow. And yeah. it is also very rushed that the company wants to just rebuild the Chucky doll to relaunch the company. It just doesn't fit quite right, but it serves as enough to make a sequel because we want yeah. to see more Chucky. We, we, we want to see more Chucky. And... See, that's the thing, though, with, with typical horror movies, you know, when you're not able to get back the, the, the original stars from the first film, they just kind of plow over the story, and we just get thrown with, with Andy into the foster home, and once again, we've got Alex Vincent uh, playing Andy, and he, he pulls it off, not as well as he did in the first film, but well enough to be this stronger character. Chucky, however, has just turned even better. The... the like we said, the special effects in the first one were a, a prototype, where in the second one they've advanced it, and you can tell more that you know his face moves and that his hands move, and his foulness in his mouth is just he got even more better. From the first kill, he just you know plastic bagging the guy in the car and just laughing his head off. <laughs> As he's enjoying killing this person. <laughs> well, that was the thing that Brad Dorff actually said uh, in an interview was, you know, while he's playing Chucky, because he's never actually on set when they're filming the doll stuff, he always yeah. does his voiceover stuff work, uh, first. And he's always said that the thing that gets him excited about playing Chucky is, is the fact that Chucky enjoys his work. <laughs> and it really shows in the second movie. They really... Uh, saw what worked in the first movie with this character and really just played on it with the second one. See, I I, I do like the way that they they work with the foster family in this as well. You know, you do you do feel close to the the mother and the and the father, but then Chucky comes along and you kind of want him to start killing people off, and then when he does, you're like, ah, oh, I liked him. You know, he, <laughs> he was quite nice. It, it's brilliantly built up with, with some good tension. Like when, when Chucky first turns up the house and he comes across the other good guy doll that they decided to give Andy. And obviously oh. <laughs> Andy reacted quite badly to this one. So Chucky decides to take care of him by smashing his face in with a, with a statue. He then buries the body and just stands out in the garden laughing his ass off. <laughs> Nobody hears Chucky is always amazing as well. <laughs> I told you, he's the master of espionage. <laughs> <laughs> but then it, it, it turns into this a cat and mouse story where where Andy is forever running from Chucky. And Chucky is forever chasing him down. There's, there's that brilliant sequence where he's got the girl in the car. And he's just like, 
you know, drive faster, drive faster. And she's like, okay. And she clicks in her seatbelt and then she descends Chucky flying out the windscreen. I'm just like, ooh. See, I do have a few problems with, the, especially that moment as well, is that I find it really hard to believe that this little doll is actually going to have enough force and weight to smash <laughs> through that glass still. Which also brings me on to another uh, issue that I actually have as a negative with Child's Play 2, is the fact that uh, how inept... Chucky actually has become at doing what he's actually intending to do (laughs) from the start of the film. He has so many instances where he could actually finish the Rudu ritual and transfer his soul, but he doesn't because he's (laughs) having too much fun. It's it, it boggles the mind. It's the scene where, he, he, as you just said, where he sneaks in and he ties Andy up <laughs> and he sat there and he's about to do the ritual and then uh, their other d- daughter comes in yeah. and Chucky's just like, oh, pl- play doll. <laughs> I'm like, why doesn't... He, he could just kill her right now. Andy's already tied up. He could just kill her and, and perform the ritual and be done. But no, she's going to no. play doll. It's See, I, I got that as well. He, he kills everybody else around Andy and like... One hit, you know, he just, he scares them into submission and then beats them to death or, you know, makes them break their neck. But Andy, he always slips up. And I know, I know it's meant to extend the film, but these moments you're like, uh, why are you taking so long? <laughs> oh, now you're spoiling, you're going to have to kill two more people before you get hold of him again. <laughs> yeah, and hence the cat and mouse chase continues. So I think Child's Play 2 is a good sequel to the first one because... Yeah. We've already built up the suspense of the doll from the first movie by not actually revealing it. And obviously, as the technology's continued, there's not much reason to keep the doll hidden from the audience. Mm. So it's very early on that we actually get to see Chucky walking around talking, being vulgar and killing people. (laughs) And so the pacing of the movie is a lot quicker than the first movie. And it does become much more of an action horror movie than it did a suspense movie. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, The second one... Is, is brilliantly done to a point. There are just moments where you're just like, oh, come on, really? You know, we're going into the traditional horror sense now. It's like like the, the, the point where the girl, uh, the, the stepdaughter, has found Tommy's body out in the garden. And so she realises that Andy is actually telling the truth again. And so she runs into the house and she's shouting for her stepmother. And walks into the bedroom really slowly up to the to her stepmother, who is obviously dead. You could tell she was dead the moment she didn't answer the first time, but we have to get into the room first. And then we, we then wait for Chucky's appearance, which is brilliantly done when he comes up underneath the sheet. But it's you, you have to find that balance. And it's like the, that point where the, the stepdad throws Chucky down the stairs. Don't and piss off the doll. <laughs> And then later on, Chucky follows Andy to school, manages to get back before Andy and lie in the same spot for the for the stepfather to go, see, he's still down there. I'm like, I would have taken a hammer to that doll. I would have not left that doll lying in the basement. I'd have set fire to it, burn it, grounded Andy. Because those would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot him in the heart. That works. So do you have a favourite scene from Charles Play 2? Ah, well, it's... it's Probably mainly the scenes with Chucky in. Uh, I, I especially like the scene with the teacher where Chucky is snuck into the school written, fuck you bitch, on a big piece of paper with Andy's name on it. Has scared Andy so that he has to stay in detention and then has been locked in the cupboard. He scares Andy off and then the teacher comes back and when she thinks that Andy's in the cupboard, how he got in there when she locked it and locked the room, you know, she's a teacher, what are you going to do? But then he manages to come out of the room and beat her to death with a stick. And I just think, oh, there's a few teachers I wouldn't mind doing that to. <laughs> You've been very naughty, Miss Kettlebell. Ah! I think um, my favourite scene of the film is probably the confrontation between Chucky and Tommy. It was almost like you wanted to see more good guy dolls or Chucky interact with them and you get the perfect opportunity here. And obviously when uh, Chucky is burying Tommy underneath the swing, (laughs) it's just the way, it's just his dialogue and it's the way he's just shoveling dirt into his face and he's just laughing just (laughs) maniacally. It's just that there is Chucky. (laughs) 
Tommy. <laughs> I, I, I also like to bring up Charles Bay 2 did follow the ritual of let's fuck Chucky up. As the film progresses, obviously, you know, the heroes are going to win, but what they do to him in the factory is just disturbing. You know, they rip off his arm, they rip off his legs, they melt him in plastic, they blow up his head, and I'm just like, all right, calm down. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they really did batter the shit out of that doll, and Brad Dorof responds perfectly to all of the torture he endures. <laughs> It's a fantastic set piece. Yeah. And I think there's a good 20 minutes almost in that factory. And there's a good little jump, few jump scares when they're walking around because obviously there's all of those dolls and Chucky has the ability to play doll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> If you if you've watched the first one and and you're following Charles Lee Ray's infamous spree through cinema, then yes, follow up with Charles Blade Two. It's it's not as fun and suspenseful as the first one, but just for Chucky alone, it will fill in the gaps. Absolutely. Uh, in my childhood, when I was watching these movies, Charles Play Two was always my favourite. Originally, I used to find the first one boring and the third one stupid, but because <laughs> the second one had more crazy action sequences. Um, looking back at them now, the second one does suffer from a lot of issues, technical issues, uh, yeah. of the filmmaking, the writing process, but the character of Chucky keeps the film going. It's your investment in that in that character now. Maybe also with the Andy character, because you would have maybe liked the film to study more the psychological impact of what is actually happening with this uh, person, with Andy, especially having... Um, having to deal with the psychotic doll, uh, having to lose his mother, going through several uh, foster, foster parents. parents, and then obviously having the doll come back at him again. It doesn't really seem to have too much of an impact on him, but it was something that may have been suggested by the writers, but was just uh, dropped out in favour of having Chucky be the star instead. Yeah. How's it hanging, Phil? Uh, uh, uh. Which brings us on to Child's Play 3, which came out in 1991, just one year after Child's Play 2. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Child's Play 3? Well, Chucky gets brought back to life again. His body is rebuilt back in the old factory, which he was killed in in number 2, and his blood manages to get into the plastic mixture. And obviously his soul takes control of another good guy's doll, which the company is trying to relaunch again even though the papers are sprayed with Andy Barkley killer doll stories we also follow Andy he has been sent to Kent Military Academy because he just can't seem to settle in any of the foster homes that he's been sent to Chucky manages to get hold of this information and decides to go after Andy again but this time re realizes that because he's got a new body he doesn't have to change it with Andy. He can change his soul now with a new child, Tyler. That's something I like about the the mythology that they're building up over these three movies now, is that they even, it's some similarly the same writers that are keeping the mythology of the fact that once the rules have been set, they, they don't break them. Yeah. Uh, and that is the fact that you know the longer he spends in the body, the more human he becomes. It's the first person that he reveals his secret to once he's in that body that yeah. he then has the limited amount of time in order to do the voodoo magic. See, I like to think of this film as Chucky versus the military. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. It just seems like a really silly concept. You know, obviously they were trying to cash in on the, the Chucky lore again and they're thinking, how can we expand the story? We'll get... Andy back in but we'll have a different actor 
uh, we'll get Brad Dorf in, luckily, you know, with, with the Chucky character. But he, he turns up at this military academy and we, we seem to just get half the film filtered from, like, Full Metal Jacket and Apocalypse Now, you know, which is constantly following Andy, during, you know, doing his training in the army. When Chucky does finally turn up, he obviously reveals his secret to Tyler and goes to transfer his soul. But once again, it takes, like, ten minutes to do the chanting spell. <laughs> Even though it only took like three minutes at the, in the first film for him to transfer his soul into the into the doll body, it takes him like an hour to transfer into a human body. <laughs> he then spends the rest of the film chasing either Andy, who he unsuccessfully tries to kill again, or chasing Tyler, who's playing hide and seek with him. I'm like, really? Come and find me. Uh, damn it. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> he goes around, Chucky literally goes around and kills everybody else around them apart from these two people. I'm like, come on, Chucky. You're a notorious serial killer. <laughs> but he's having too much fun. <laughs> and it's really over the top with this third movie. He is gloriously executing people left, right and centre. These bodies are, are going down and, and people are not noticing or paying attention. <laughs> no. There's no police presence at all in the third movie. Well, he, kills, he kills the head CEO of the good guys company. Nobody notices. He kills the commanding officer of the military base. And they just carry on as normal. They kill the, he kills the barber who is actually spotted by, was it Whitehurst I think it was? One of the soldiers who is a sorry excuse of a soldier. He... Whitehurst runs off and doesn't tell anybody. You know, he's just seen a, a ginger-haired doll kill a guy, slice his throat and be laughing in the blood. And he doesn't tell anybody. I'm just like, oh, really? <laughs> there are a lot of awfully contrived scenes in, in this movie. As you said, there's a lot of polishing boots, in the mess hall, dialogue, um, being punished out in the rain but holding their rifles doing press ups it was the love just, sequence the love sequence it, there was an awful lot of tacky moments in there and they just punctuated the scenes with chucky which just made you just want to see more chucky <laughs> <laughs> chucky again just steals the show in this i mean the, the the first instance where he does kill the ceo he just plans it so perfectly you know he throws marbles on the floor to trip him up sends toys after him hits him in the back with darts and then smacks his head with a golf club and I'm just like yes Chucky kill some more people and then he causes a guy to have a heart attack <laughs> and literally stands there and goes oh you gotta be fucking kidding me <laughs> There are some really nice inventive ways of killing people in this third movie. Um, one of the ones that always um, stuck out for me when I first watched the film was the, the dumpster guy, the guy with the rubbish. <laughs> yeah. And Chucky's in the back of the truck and he's about to be squashed and killed and he's pleading, he's screaming for help. And so the guy's rummaging around through the rubbish to find him and Chucky just turns it back on. And it's just <laughs> the imagery of, of that wheel of the spikes coming towards him yeah. and the wall being pressed in. It was uh, So there are some actual nice, genuine horror moments in Child's Play 3, kind of ruined by some tacky teenage acting. Yeah, Jimmy Olsen and, and De Silva, is it? His the little love sequence, you know. As soon as Andy turns up, you know, he's just the cool guy. He's the new guy. Every other new guy gets picked on, apart from Andy. And they're all like, yeah, let's, just, let's be friends with him. Let's fall in love with him. While he's running around with knives, sneaking into people's bedrooms, looking for killer dolls. Which just makes me laugh again that throughout these films, people only slightly pick up that Andy Barkley is connected to these killer dolls. You know, every time Andy turns up, people die around him. If he's dying, <laughs> look for the good guy doll. It's probably him. <laughs> oh, well, they do, but then they can't find the doll. <laughs> Uh, I initially had a lot of problems with uh, Child's Play 3, but watching it back now, I enjoy it because I know that the story of Chucky goes past this point. Yeah. Uh, this Child's Play 3, I think, was their experiment in what they could get away with with this doll, which would 
obviously later become the Chucky movies. Yeah. And a lot of people actually forget when they see Chucky or hear about Chucky was that they were originally child's play movies. Mm, yes. It, it's 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 fun to get connected to the, the Chucky character, but what's missing from the first film is the suspense built up with the surrounding characters. You know, yeah, we'd love to see the, the, the movement in his faces and the laughing, but... I like to I like to think of him as like we said the stealth killer. You know when he turns up he really scares you because he's jumped out and you didn't realize he's there. In Charles Play Three he he's actually sat in a cupboard and it just looks so placed. You know I do want him to just to jump out and scare us, but I want him to do it like he did in the original film. Yeah, well, there is that nice scene where he just jumps out of the good guy box, which is a nice little surprise for Tyler. But the thing that some of the things that bug me the most about this film is how the hell Chucky got himself into uh, the military school. I want to know. I want to see him trying to seal himself into the good guy box, manage to shuffle himself down into the post office, <laughs> and book himself a flight to wherever he needed to go. Um, there's also um, Chucky's ineptitude yet again towards the end of the movie, where he's about to perform the ritual again. Yeah. He's He's got the red team and the blue team that are playing a war game, uh, fighting at, fighting and shooting at each other. He's got the grenade there, and uh, he throws the grenade, and people are dying, and he's just laughing and laughing <laughs> mechi- uh, maniacally about the chaos that he's caused. <laughs> at this point, the little boy that he was trying to possess has just shuffled off and ran off. It's just, oh, come on, so- I'm actually rooting for, the, for Chucky now. <laughs> I, I do I do actually like the the final sequence when they when they get to the fun fair. I mean that whole roller coaster set is is much like much like in the second one is a is a big grand finale. But he like we said he manages to get Tyler at the top of this massive skull mountain, and he's there for at least three to five minutes doing this chant, and we're watching Andy, and I know that the tension's building up, and Andy climbs halfway up, and then slides back down, and then climbs back up, and aims his gun, and I'm like, come on! Really? You haven't transferred? You, I should, you should have just stopped by now, but but it does build up to that grand finale where, where Chucky's, half of Chucky's face gets ripped off, and his arm gets blown off, and he gets thrown into the big, massive <laughs> fan, and his body is obliterated. I'm just like... Oh, I feel bad now. Uh, yeah, my my favorite scene is the uh, barber shop scene. It's even though you see Chucky just sat there in the cupboard, it's it's the way he just stands there in the middle of the room once he sliced the guy's throat, and the fact that the guy that he's killing as well is a, is a well known horror actor as well. He's quite an evil character once you see him at the start cutting people's hair and he's got the wall of hair, you know, and he's just walking around the mess hall and he's grabbing people and he's like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, make make sure you're in the chair because I'm going to cut your hair and then his throat gets slit and you're like, yes. (laughs) And then of course you have Chucky's one liner. Presto, you're dead. (laughs) It's definitely you. But uh, I think my favourite scene really is actually the opening sequence. It is when the CEO of the company uh, is killed. But it's the build up to it. It's it's you know hiding the remote, turning the TV off, yeah. throwing out the marbles. The scene, as you said, I, it's a really good horror build up. It's classic horror movie making, which the rest of the movie just drops straight away. <laughs> it was almost like that first scene was just a reminder of what Child's Play was yeah. uh, before it descends into lunacy. <laughs> I I don't really recommend Child's Play 3. I mean, like like I said, if you've seen Child's Play 1, Child's Play 2, and you're, you're just following the course of Chucky, you're going to have to go through it. It is fun, and it does have some really cool Chucky moments, but all in all, it's a weak, weak film, and that's partially down to the acting. The acting and the army scenes is just... I'm just like... It's the military. I know all this bullshit. You're all going to die because Chucky's going to kill you all, but then you're going to take him out and 
fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it didn't feel like there was many consequences of Chucky's actions uh, felt by anybody in yeah. the third movie. So it kind of the you wanted to see more more adults actually responding in uh, to to Chucky, but we are left with it being more of a teenage kind of movie, yeah. which I think was. The fact that the first two Charles Play movies were so successful with a teenage audience, which is why they decided to bring more teens actually into the third movie and appeal yeah. to that demographic more. But I, I do, after rewatching uh, Charles Play three recently, I do actually recommend it. It is actually better than I remembered it being because I was really quite disappointed the first time I saw it because I didn't feel like I got enough. Uh, closure with the Andy and his family and the situation that was developing there. Yeah. So it, it is kind of weak on that level, but for the laughs and the one-liners that Chucky gives, which I'd almost completely forgotten, it's worth watching the film for again. Yeah. Just think, Chucky's gonna be a bro. <laughs> Make sure to check back next week where we'll be reviewing Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, and The Curse of Chucky. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Don't fuck with the chuck!